Hey guys, welcome to Pine Tree Line. If you don't know who I am, my name is Doug, and this channel is all about outdoor content. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing. Today we're talking about modifications that I made to my bargain wood burning stove from Princess Auto that I bought about three years ago for like 58 bucks. And there's been a number of modifications been made on it. Uh, the modifications were made by my buddy Mark from Open Air Outdoors and uh, I'll link his channel. And I'll also link a video that Mark did explaining and showing uh, the latest modifications. So basically he did two sets of modifications after coming uh, hot tank camping with me. And we'll go through kind of the first set of modifications. I do have a little bit of video of Mark explaining exactly what he did the first time around. And then uh, I also will show some uh, changes that he made the second time around and explain a few things. So first off, let's look at the initial uh, stove and the changes he initially made to the stove right now. So we're here on a little hot tent uh, overnighter and I thought I'd discuss a little bit of what you can do with a, a purchase stove that is not quite working out for you. There are things you can do, simple things. Some things that I've, that I've done may not be for everybody in the way that I have access to a welder. So some of you we will look at this, you may think, well, I can't do that. You pull your resources together. Sometimes you can find somebody on a simple Facebook group that can do some work for you. This stove is designed that all the pieces fit inside. So we have a number of uh, stove pipes. I'm going to pull it out. You'll notice right away I have a pipe that looks different than the other ones. Okay, the first thing I did, this stove came with four legs that insert into these sleeves like so. They're a little bit wobbly. When you put the stove down, the, wa the stove is kind of wobbly and it's because the pipes, these legs, the difference in size uh, in conjunction to the parts they screw into is uh, quite a bit different so it makes them wonky. But they do have these thumb screws to tighten it up. But the issue we had with this is it made the stove a little bit, in our opinion, too high. If I flip the stove up and I balance it on the one leg only, it is quite high. And for those of you, if you're uh, new to dealing with a wood stove, I can tell you that generally the distance between the bottom of the stove and the ground is very difficult to heat up. So the longer the legs, the higher up your stove is, you'll have a high temperature above you, but below the stove, that temperature will be dramatically colder. So if you can lower your stove, you also lower the heat inside, whether it be a hut, a tent, or an ice hut, what have you. So what about the modification? So the legs, what I have done is I fabricated this leg right here. Much shorter and they connect both pieces at the same time and i'm going to insert it insert one now just to show you just like so so now it's it's much more stable because the two connecting legs are connected together this lowered the stove to the height that i felt was appropriate but I did do something a little bit extra to these legs. I left the pipe sticking out on each end a little bit extra. I did that on purpose so that this would dig into the ground, whether it be snow, gravel, dirt, whatever, what have you. And the reason I wanted this is because I did not want to have a situation where if you open the stove and you go in with a piece of wood and stick it in there, these legs turn into skis and your stove slides away from you. The other modification was Doug had an issue with the pipe. He wasn't comfortable with the stove pipe. He felt that they were too close to the tent when he did a, a dry fit, shall we say, in his yard at home. Here's the original pipe. So the top of the pipe was too close to the, to the tent. I had to figure out what I was going to do. I ended up buying this pipe here, which is uh, right off the shelf, uh, Canadian Tire. This is a uh, tailpipe from the exhaust section. And uh, utilizing this, I was able to add some more length to push the pipe further up, alleviating the possibility of sparks falling on the tent, as the last pipe was kind of close to the tent. Another modification is this right here. This I fabricated to replace the original rain cap. There's no spark arrestor 
and uh, I fabricated this spark arrestor right here. This is simply expanded metal. And this stuff is very uh, pliable, easy to work with. I simply cut a piece, uh, rolled it into somewhat of a cone shape, and uh, bend the edges over so it wouldn't be sharp, and then bend the top in to close itself up on itself. And then quite simply, on the end of the pipe, just slip that on like that. Uh, I've never worked with a stove that has such a small flue pipe. And this stove here did not even have a damper. And that was something I felt should be beneficial. So I built a damper for it. And uh, quite simply, if it doesn't work out, it can only be removed. Simply, it is a quarter inch bolt that I drilled through the pipe. And then I fastened a piece of uh, thin gauge, uh, I believe it was 18 gauge steel. And by removing the pipe from the stove, I was able to put it, put it together and weld it inside the pipe. And I simply welded a cross bolt on the end. And when the cross bolt is horizontal, the flue pipe is closed. When the cross bolt is vertical, the flue pipe, the damper is open. So that's some of the changes that he made uh, moving forward. I can explain a couple things that aren't gonna be explained in the, uh, in the video I'm gonna show you next. But basically, uh, Mark cut down the, the pipe that was on top of here that had the flue. He had created a flue. We found that it really didn't do much in terms of, uh, you know, preventing air coming down the, uh, the chimney because it's such a small diameter chimney. It wasn't really doing anything. Uh, it didn't really affect the, uh, the amount of air inside the stove. Uh, we got more out of the damper in the front here uh, as far as controlling the amount of flame and controlling the amount of air in the combustion chamber of the stove. So basically, part of the second part of modifications, Mark uh, cut that right off and we no longer have that. Uh, another thing that won't be mentioned uh, is what he did to the piping system. And basically, the way the pipes that came with the stove um, used to fit one way where you'd have um, pipes on top of each other, kind of like this. So any creosote would uh, come dripping uh, through the attachment down the pipe. Uh, so basically what Mark did is he changed uh, this part of the pipe so that now everything goes the opposite way. So you'd have the pipe fitting in like this and then you'd have the next version uh, fitting like this. So basically the creosote is not gonna get through and drip down the pipe anymore because the pipes are fitting inside each other in that respect. Uh, I'll show a little bit of video here where he'll talk about um, how we removed the uh, the side tubes and how we added the flat plate to the uh, top of the stove to make it better for cooking. So Mark cut the top off the uh, stove because the one thing that uh, we found using it last time we were out uh, hot tank camping, uh, not enough heat to cook. Um, you know, it's boiled them up and the bacon was already cooked. With uh, this new piece of flat bar on here, uh, it's nice and flat and it should, uh, you should get the heat. Yeah, well I removed, I removed the uh, the grates, remember there was a metal yep. grates that would fold on top? Which even made whatever you put on it, yeah, it further off the... Yeah, it elevated whatever you were using, so that's gone. There was pipes on the side here, they were weird, and I took those, those out. Those are off. And I asked Mark to keep the handle so that I could uh, carry it that way. Yeah, it Because it does good. weigh, I think, 23 pounds or something. So with his modifications of the legs, we got the heat lower. Modification of the top of the stove. Uh, makes the ability to cook in the stove a lot better. He solved the problem of the creosote dripping down the stove pipe. The door is more solid than it was before. Pretty flimsy in, originally, but you know now it works really good. He was able to keep the handles, which makes it easy to move. The stove's been very robust. It's heated well. It's done a really good job. And other than making a few minor adjustments to make hot tank camping experience uh, for, for me or for us, uh, Mark's come with me a couple times so far, it's worth it in the end to make some mods and, and have the stove work better and heat the, the hot tent better and to be able to cook better. Just want to thank Mark. Check out his channel. Check out his video on making the latest modifications. I'll link that above. And he does a great job of uh, making this way better than it was. So uh, it's still coming in very cheap. Uh, I think, like I said, I paid $58 for the stove. And with the modifications, I think it cost him about 30 bucks in uh, materials. And uh, Mark did, uh, did the work for free. 
Thanks, buddy. So I hope you enjoyed the, the video, and I encourage you to uh, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, check out some of the hot tent uh, camping videos that I have. I'll link them down below. Have a great time out there, guys. You don't have to spend a ton of money to enjoy the outdoors. You just got to be smart about it. Take care, guys.